Hello, everybody. Uh, my name is Dan Gilbarb. I'm a professor of sociology here and chair of the Multicultural Committee. And I'm privileged today to introduce our speaker, uh, Niklas Saad Mohammed Hassan. Uh, Dr. Hassan is a professor at, at um, Fayoum University, I hope I pronounced that correctly, mm -hmm. and uh, has a PhD from Cairo University. And she's a Fulbright visiting scholar at Bridgewater State University for the current semester. So we're lucky to have somebody that is so knowledgeable about Egypt, both because of being Egyptian, but also because of being a scholar with specialties in Middle Eastern studies and women's studies. And she's going to be focusing today, as it indicates from the title, on the struggle for women's rights in Egypt. Uh, so let's welcome Dr. Hassan. I should say the format for today is she would be speaking and making a presentation. If you have any questions, please jot them down, and there'll be opportunity at the end to ask questions and have question and answer. Thank you. Thank you for very much for introducing me and for having me uh, today. Uh, I'm going to uh, talk today about the struggle for women's rights in Egypt and the idea of Egyptian feminism. Um, uh, I know a lot of you are expecting me to, to talk about what's, what's gone, gone in Egypt as a revolution, as a change, and all, all such stuff. And actually, my presentation will round up with the role of women in the January 25th revolution. Um, to speak about the struggle of women's rights in Egypt is to go back in history to the end of 19th century. Um, to live in the Middle East, actually, at that particular time, to be a woman and to live in the Middle East and to be an Egyptian woman, meant that uh, no right to work, no right to education. Uh, the only job uh, given to women at that time was that of a wife and uh, a mother. And women were not allowed to mix up with any uh, male uh, uh, members in the community and they were not even allowed to go out for prayers in the mosque. And, and this included uh, Muslims and also t treated Christians as well. So the struggle for women's rights, the idea of freedom, the idea of gaining social rights first, it started at the end of the 19th century with some uh, prominent figures who, who tried to carve out a space for women in the uh, society of Egypt at that time. It started from uh, that time with people uh, from the upper class, because these people were married to uh, some important uh, figures in the uh, Egyptian society at that time. And that's why they were, you know, uh, allowed some access to express themselves through writing and through uh, speaking up in some circles, but it didn't reach up to the bottom of the society. So as I said, the, the idea of feminist awareness in Egypt started at the end of the 19th century and it flourished actually at the beginning of the 20th century. Just the same time the idea of feminist awareness was developing in the West with what we, we call the first wave feminism, we have also the first, what we can call the first wave of Egyptian feminism starting you know, almost exactly at the same time. But it emerged actually from uh, the circumstances uh, and the context of the Egyptian society at that time. At that time, Egypt was colonized by the British, and we did also have the Turkish rule. So it was sort of, uh, you know, we had by or dual colonialism. So we had the British and with the Turkish. And so, Women were subordinated and at a time when the, the whole country was also subordinated under colonialism. So there was no such talk about political right, rights as the first. There was talk about the right to choose 
you know, a husband, which was denied to women at that time, the right to go for education. And when they go to education, it was that they will have the right to ask for work and the right to participate into some social events in which men go. It started with some uh, prominent figures whose names are, you know, uh, very uh, well known in, uh, in the history of Egypt, Egyptian feminism, like Aisha Al-Taymuraya, Malak Hifni Nasif, Huda Sha'rawi. These are very well uh, known uh, names in the, in the history of Egyptian feminism. These were women who recognized the subordination of Egyptian women and tried to, um, to address their dilemma and their problems very early in the history of uh, Egyptian feminism. So uh, we have uh, a figure like Aisha al Taymuraya who tried to uh, resist the subordination of Egyptian women through the power of writing. Uh, she used to write uh, poetry and she uh, was addressing the problems and the uh, sufferings of women at that time through her own uh, poems and through the, the power of the world. So as early as the very beginning of the 20th century, we have some poems addressing the, the problems of marginalizing Egyptian women and keeping them from the social and the political scene of the country at that time. And at the bottom, we can see a very important line, and it's translated from Arabic, and she's addressing the, the male uh, members of the Egyptian society at that time. And she's saying, O oh men of our homelands, O oh who you control our affairs, why have you left women behind? So she is... Uh, she recognizes the dilemma of women, their marginalization, and she's trying to resist uh, this uh, state of affair as that time through her, uh, her own words. Uh, another important figure in the history of Egyptian feminism and the struggle for women's rights is uh, Malak Hefni Nasif. And as you can see, she's, she was still in her traditional clothes. She was wearing the hijab and even uh, she looks like, uh, you know, a Bedouin in her clothes. And still she was resisting the uh, marginalization and subordination of women as the beginning of the 20th century. And she used to write uh, under a pseudonym because the idea of women writers at that time, much like the case in the West at that time, women were not, uh, you know, uh, regarded as equal uh, as men, and if they wrote, uh, they, they covered their identity behind some, you know, uh, male name, some anonymous name, some vague name. So she wrote actually behind the name of, uh, she, she called herself Bahasat al in Arabic, which is called, which we, if you translate it, a seeker of the desert. That's how she signed her articles, which were published at that time. And she resisted, uh, the subordination of women is in so many different articles. And these uh, articles were grouped after her death in a very important book, which is called Feminist Text. And as you can see, it has got the name feminist at, at a time when feminism was not uh, actually, or has not actually taken its uh, you know, shape. Uh, another important figure in the history of Egyptian feminism is Huda Sha'rawi. And Huda Sha'rawi is, uh, is known for many uh, achievements. She is one who has struggled at many uh, levels, including the social and the, and the political. And her achievements are many, actually. And as you can see, she's a, she was a still in her, you know, uh, traditional clothes, but she was gaining awareness of her rights as a woman. And she uh, actually was the first to, to organize a series of lectures in 19, oh, 
eight at uh, Fouad University, which was uh, uh, which is now uh, Cairo University, the most important uh, and prestigious university in our country, the university where Obama gave his uh, speech to the Middle East. So at a very early time, she called for you know the idea of educating women. And because women were denied access to the university at that time, she thought of uh, organizing and giving lectures on Friday, because Friday is the official holiday in Egypt. And because men were not in the, on campus at that time, she uh, uh, was successful in uh, getting women into the university on Friday for general lectures, educating them about their rights, about health matters, about, about social matters, about the right to speak up, their dilemma about the right to say no to any problem which may face women at that time. And this actually was revolutionary. And what happened is that male students didn't like the idea, even those who were not in on campus during Fridays. But the idea of women coming into campus was, uh, was not, uh, you know, uh, OK with men uh, and male students at that time. And they went to end into demonstration uh, uh, rejecting the idea and finally these lectures stopped the university administration responded with you know uh, canceling these lectures but it was a very important achievement and she worked also as a social level she organized what was known as Mubarak Muhammad Ali which is a social organization and she tried to to reach women from the lower class, uh, giving them advice and, and, uh, and you know, uh, supporting them uh, psychologically and financially when this was needed. And, and she also formed the Union of Educational Educated Egyptian Women in 1914 in order to reach other educated women throughout Egypt to form uh, a kind of, uh, uh, you know, uh, oppositional organization addressing the problems of women at that time. Um, with, the, with the 1919 revolution, this is a very important revolution in the history of Egypt. It is a revolution which was directed as, as a British colonialism. And in this revolution, the, the idea of feminism shifted from what is social to what is political. Uh, Hoda Sha'rawi, uh, you know, called her, her women in her different circles to go out into the street and to demonstrate with men on, on equal foot asking for the ousting of the colonizer at this very early time in the history of Egypt. And from that point on, the idea of political participation of women flourished. And as you can see, this is a picture of some women uh, participating in the 1919 revolution. Women were in their traditional clothes, and at that time, covering the face was part of the culture and the tradition for Muslims and Christians as well. So women were in their traditional clothes, but they went out into the street and they demonstrated and they revolted against the colonizer alongside men in the street. And this is another uh, picture also referring to the participation of women in the 1919 uh, revolution. And after the 1919 revolution, the idea of, uh, of women's participation in the political scene in Egypt, uh, you know, flourished. And Hoda Sha'rawi still did a, a key role in this uh, aspect. So sh she first formed what was known as the Egyptian Feminist Union. And the name, you know, is suggestive of what was uh, you know, included in their agenda. They were, they had their demands uh, concerning marriage, marriage, education, work. 
and they have stretched their demands to reach the political aspects as well. And this union actually included Muslims and Christians throughout the whole country from upper and middle classes and it paved the way for the other, the other political organization which uh, was the Wafdist, the women, the Wafdist Women's Committee. The Wafd was a very important political party at that time in Egypt. It was the, the major political party, like the National Democratic Party in our um, you know, regime now. And to form a women committee in this party led by Sharawi was, uh, you know, a sort of radical uh, change. This was the beginning of, uh, uh, you know, women coming into the political scene and involving themselves into uh, the, the political network of the country at that time. Uh, after some years, uh, the revolution, the 1919 revolution was actually successful and Egypt has gained some rights and the, it, it, it reached a kind of, you know, quasi-independence from the British. But still, women were left out and they were not, you know, given any rights and they were actually denied the right to, to vote. It, you know, in uh, 19, the Constitution of 1923 gave the, the, male, the males uh, the right to vote, but they left out uh, women. Uh, the idea of struggling for more rights, more freedom, uh, more uh, sense of equality was supported actually actually by the uh, weapon of writing. There, are, there were so many journals dedicated to, me, to women writing uh, during that time. And the first journal uh, that had, uh, had been dedicated to women's writing, uh, writing was called the Fata in Arabic, which is, you know, the young women. And it, it is estimated by, that by the 19, 1920s, there were actually around 30 journals wholly dedicated to women's rights. Uh, they covered different subjects, including household stuff, you know, the uh, problems of marriage, health problems, legal problems, and they continued to struggle for more, for more space, more rights through writing. Uh, the period from 1920. Uh, to 1950 witnessed other development in uh, uh, the struggle for more uh, uh, rights for women. So before that, actually, women, uh, the last stage women uh, could reach as the level of education was, uh, you know, the basic education or the preparatory education. So the first secondary, which is the highest, is like the high school here. here. The first state secondary school uh, was established in 1925 and it was established actually in Shobra, a very famous district in, uh, in Cairo. Uh, in, and it took four years for the students which joined these this uh, secondary school uh, to graduate. And it follows that in 1929, women were allowed to join uh, the university. So the, the, the entering of women into the Egyptian university happened as early as 1929. And the first women to get a PhD from Cairo University, or what was known as Fuad University at that time, was Suhaira Kalamawi, and she was the first one women uh, a PhD to, to work as a professor in Fouad University at that time. And following that, a year or so, there was the first woman to get a PhD from the Sorbonne in, in France. Uh, 
If you talk about the idea of Egyptian feminism, a very important issue is related to what we call the personal status law. And this is law is concerned with women's right to ask for divorce and to get, uh, uh, you know, uh, to object to a second marriage if is this, uh, you know, hurts her psychologically, financially, or physically. And this law has, has got so many arguments about it. There were ups and downs, you know, about uh, the right of women to ask for divorce if she knows about the second marriage, and the right of women to stop their life if she feels that she is maltreated or, or so on and so forth. And actually, the last achievement in the, in the personal status law has, has occurred a few years ago when uh, there was an amendment which gave the woman the right to self-divorce. Instead of asking for divorce or going to court for divorce, she has the right to divorce herself if she is uh, harmed at any possible level, physical, psychological, or uh, uh, financial. Uh, the 1952 revolution, uh, which resulted in the ousting of the British uh, troops and the end of the Turkish rule with King Farouk leaving the country, uh, it was it was actually led by the military, and, uh, and because it was led by the military, it, it is supposed to be uh, having no participation from the part of women, but actually women did participate in the form of uh, uh, popular committees, uh, you know, ha helping uh, people uh, injured from the revolution and giving physical and psychological support. Um, The 1952 revolution was successful as far as uh, you know uh, the interior polit political atmosphere is concerned, but it actually didn't give women uh, the expected rights they were fighting to. So it's only you know the right to vote was only granted in 1956. It was so women had access to to vote in elections. Uh, only in 1956, meaning that this was after four years of the revolution and uh, after uh, like 32 years of uh, struggling for gaining uh, this right. But still, in the same year in which women were granted the right to vote, the feminist union which was established by Hoda Sharawi long, long before was closed. And this was part, actually, of Gamal Abdel Nasser's, you know, regime, uh, uh, his crackdown on any civil organization that can express any kind of resistant, resistance or threaten his regime in any possible way. Years went by, and the first female minister was appointed during the Nasser's regime in 1965, meaning that it is the first female minister came to office after like uh, 12 years uh, uh, after uh, Abdel Nasser's coming to power. Uh, in the 1970s and the 1980s, uh, women continued to struggle and writing continued to be their weapon. And in the 1980s, uh, the attention was shifted to other important uh, uh, dilemmas. And one of the prominent figures uh, which struggled for more uh, you know, space and rights for women is uh, Nawal Saadawi, who is still alive. And she's teaching, actually, at American universities. And she um, uh, founded uh, the Arab Women Solidarity Association, and she wrote a lot about health. She was actually a physician, and she was uh, dealing with so many psychological and physical problems that women suffered because of their subordination under some male figure, be it 
their husband or their father. And she wrote a, a lot about this. And one of the important issues she tackled, and she tackled, you know, um, a lot in her writing was female circumcision. And because of her writing and her denunciation of the practice, she was actually sent to prison during Sadat's uh, regime. Uh, in, nine, in 1986, a group of women uh, formed the New Women magazine and they began to help other ordinary women to recognize their own rights as the level, you know, uh, as a social and legal uh, level and to get women into, you know, women who don't have access to finance, to get women into income uh, generating projects in order to achieve, you know, self-independence. And because they thought that economy, economy and financial matters is very important in the struggle for gaining freedom. If you are financially free, you can ask for divorce, you can resist subordination. And that's how they helped women uh, overcome their problems. In the 20th century, the struggle for more uh, rights for women continued. And, and, and actually, Egyptian feminism uh, took uh, multiple shapes, but it was, uh, you know, centered in the activities of NGOs. Feminist activism was handled by people in NGOs going into the society and educating, you know, illiterate women and, you know, helping them be aware of their different rights and helping them ov overcome their legal uh, problems and financial problems. Uh, the struggle continued into the 21st century and uh, the, the National Council for Women uh, was established in the year 2000. And like I said, the, the self-divorce uh, law was issued also in the same year, in 2000. And, uh, and this was, uh, was considered a very important achievement because so many husbands uh, exploited their uh, right to reject women's demand for divorce and for, you know, enforcing physical and psychological uh, trouble upon, upon women. Uh, some, some men uh, went for second wife and they left the first wife suspended with no money, with no, you know, psychological or financial support or whatsoever. And because divorce was in the hand of men only, this caused a problem to so many women. And the law of self-divorce opened up a space for women to uh, struggle uh, against any, uh, you know, uh, maltreatment of as the hand of husbands and to free herself at a time when she feels that uh, familial life uh, is difficult to continue. And in 2003, uh, there was the first female judge appointed and her name is Tahani El Gabali. And this was considered a very important achievement because women went to, into different jobs, but uh, Still, women were not allowed to go into the military. Women were not allowed to go into the police. And they were not allowed to be judges. And after so much argument, the first uh, judge, female judge, was appointed in 2003. And this is uh, one of the important achievements in the history of the struggling for more rights. And in 2005, there were uh, like nine, uh, Actually, nine seats allocated to women in the parliament, which is not, you know, many, but uh, this uh, was also a kind of achievement regarding uh, the idea of women coming into the political scene because in the past they were denied, first they were denied the, the right to vote, and it came, you know, as a consequence, they were not allowed the. Uh, to be in the parliament. So as time went by, women went into the parliament uh, and, and, and in 2005 they gained uh, uh, nine seats. And a few months ago there was issued 
uh, another decree which gave women uh, a quota in the parliament of, uh, and they had the right to 64 uh, seats in the, in the people's assembly or the parliament. And this is considered another uh, important achievement. In the January 25th revolution, women uh, participated uh, on equal foot with men. Women uh, were in the Tahrir Square, uh, you know, uh, standing and sleeping in the streets uh, and persisting in their demands for democracy, freedom, better life, uh, more social justice, and the, the ousting of uh, the regime. And if you go into the internet and you Google women's, Egyptian women in the January Revolution, you'll find lots of videos and pictures of women in, from different classes of, with different sort of clothes, different ages, participating, chanting, staying and sleeping in the street for 18 days till they succeeded in the uh, ousting of the regime. So this is uh, this. I have some pictures, and this is a woman in Tahrir Square, and this is a picture of some other women during the January Revolution in the street. And you, as you can see, veiled, unveiled, with a scarf, with no scarf, no difference, and women you know alongside men with no sexual harassment with no sense of inferiority and asking for the same demands and this is a picture of Stelana you know a third woman uh, uh, you know resisting the police force in Tahrir Square during January revolution the revolution as far as the political uh, demands were concerned. It has uh, brought its fruits. It was successful. It has, uh, you know, uh, ousted uh, Mubarak and ended his regime. And we are in a state of transition. And we are speculating what is coming next. And the, actually, the military is uh, doing a fantastic job during this transitional uh, stage, waving for the next elections. And still, uh, we. Uh, women are contesting after the revolution for more demands. So they are preparing actually uh, an agenda asking for the, the right for the office of presidency. Why not a female president? And we also ask, we are also asking for women as governor. We have 28 governorates in Egypt, and we don't have in the history of Egypt a single female governor of any governorate. So why not? This is one of our demands after the revolution. And we want women as prime ministers as well, because there was never ever in our history a female prime minister. More social justice, more political rights. And Actually, after the revolution, there was the Women's Day, March 8th, and there was a million march of women and men going into Tahrir Square asking, after you know, the end and success of the revolution, asking for more you know, uh, rights for women and demanding that the revolution should uh, bring its fruits to women who participated equally uh, in the success of this uh, revolution. Whether this revolution will, will grant women uh, these demands, we are speculating uh, and we hope it will not uh, let women down as previous, one, uh, as previous ones. Thank you very much. <laughs>